I just got back from a camping trip with my family and this portable power station I made using these made it so much better. With camping becoming more and more popular, it's very hard to find a service site, a site with electricity, or if you're backwoods camping, you probably don't have access to electricity at all. And you start looking into things like portable generators, portable power stations, and even though they are more affordable, I thought there's gotta be a cheaper option. I have a bunch of power tool batteries that I have at home. How could I make one of those into my own power station? And I'm gonna show you how you do it. I will start off by saying, if you already don't have power tool batteries or you don't already have power tools that have batteries or a battery that you have access to, that's gonna be your biggest cost you're gonna to have to incur up front and that might put you into a bracket right away where looking at portable power stations and buying one might be a better option for you. But luckily I had a failed project that I already had a bunch of components from that I was able to put into this new project. And this failed project was supposed to be a power station that ran off of my buddy heater, off of propane heat. If you haven't seen my video where I made the fan in my buddy heater run off of its own heat, I'll put the link in the description and I'll probably add a link somewhere around here that you can click on and you can check that out. But I wanted to make a power station that ran off the propane heat and just didn't work out. And as much as I tried to make it work, it just didn't generate enough electricity. So those parts are gonna be going into this power station. Everything on this portable power station and inside of this portable power station, I got it all on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description to each item below so you can check out the prices and just go ahead and buy it right from there. So starting off, this is this case it's all in is a 30 caliber ammo plastic case. So it costs about $10 for the case and then I had all these switches and plugs and this readout I already had from the last project, but I think they're about 12 dollars 12.99 something like that but i have two usb ports right here i have a 12 volt receptacle right there i have a light switch for the lights on the front and i have a voltage readout just to keep track of what my voltage is at and keep track of where the batteries are at now the lights on the front they're just these little penny lights and they're fairly cheap and depending on how many you get it's anywhere from seven to ten dollars for a pack of them now, I did mount a GoPro mount on here so that when I go fishing, I can put my GoPro on here, film myself while just charging it right there. So overall, very simple on the outside. I just had to drill some holes for it and put everything in. Going on to the inside, flip it over. This is where the magic happens. I have a cord always in here so it's easy to access so I can charge my phones. I have an, I have an old inverter to take the power from the 12 volt receptacle and turn it into 120 for what I need. And this is like an old 2005 inverter I've had laying around, but I'm going to link one that I think is a little bit better and a little bit newer for this application. On the top here, I have the switches all wired up and I have them going to these small little blocks, these distribution blocks right here. That way I could keep the wiring more clean, a lot more simple, and I felt it was just a great option. So those are just screwed right into the lid. You can see that on the other side. They're just screwed right into the lid. And that's how all the power gets distributed through this whole unit. Now the power for this unit, I just have a 1.5 amp hour battery in right now. Usually I'll run a five amp hour battery and one five amp hour battery lasted us for a whole trip when we were charging phones up and charging our devices and charging the GoPro. But take the battery out, depending if you have a DeWalt or you have McKeed or Milwaukee, you can go ahead and get the different adapters. And I have it just, I have it just Velcroed on right there. And this adapter just has an on off switch on it that you're able to access when it's in the unit itself. That's kind of hard to see, but you're able to put your finger underneath and turn it on and off as you need to. And then the thing that makes this whole unit work, because these are 20 volt batteries, I need to go ahead and get a voltage regulator. I think the voltage regulator ran me about $30 and this was off of my last project as well. The only thing I really needed to buy for this project was this adapter for the batteries, but this voltage regulator will take anything from eight volts to 36 volts and bring it down to 12 volts and regulate it to a nice smooth 12 volts. 
and mine reads out 11.9. I don't know if that's just wiring or that's just error in the regulator, but that's what it reads out as, and it works out amazing for what I need. So overall, if I was having to buy all these pieces brand new, minus the battery, I think it would come under just under $100 for everything. So that's a lot cheaper than going ahead and buying a power unit. If I'm wrong about that price, I'll post it right here. And again, everything for a power station like this is all in the link below. Now that we have this unit all assembled and it's all been put together, I wanna put it through a test. I wanna run a fan. I wanna charge up a device. I wanna charge the GoPro that's filming it, run the fan, and let's just see how it does. Overall, for the price that I have into this and the parts I had from that old project, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I was able to charge my devices. I was able to charge two phones at once. I was able to charge two phones at once and have another phone on a fast charger. I was able to charge my GoPro. I was able to charge lanterns. I was even able to run some USB fans while charging another USB fan. And I thought that was awesome. The best part was I was able to use it to blow up my air mattresses as well I was able to run a big fan just to bring down that temperature and get some airflow going through the tent. My only issue I had with this unit the entire time I was camping is just the runtime of the fan as well as the air mattress pump. It seemed that I would get about a minute of runtime out of the air mattress pump and about 40 minutes of runtime out of the fan before I'd have to go ahead and unplug the inverter and plug it back in and then it would run again. The batteries weren't drained, the batteries weren't dead, but that's just what happened to it. I don't know if that's the fault of the inverter or the voltage regulator, but if I had to do it again, I would try a higher output regulator and a higher output inverter as well and see how that did. Overall, I'm really happy with how this unit turned out. I was so excited that I was able to make this from an old project and share it with you. So if you enjoyed this, Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what your adventures are for this summer that you have planned, and fish on.